Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Nerd Crave, and today we're going to do a pickups video, which I know are not super popular on my channel, but there are some of you that just like to see what I'm playing and what I've picked up, and a little bit of a, you know, kind of a channel update quickly before I get into the games. I'm probably going to be moving this summer, so I'm putting a lot of time and effort into packing and, uh, you know, going through all my collections and reducing things. Uh, I've done quite a few trades, getting rid of some, you know, larger volumes of things for some smaller, more valuable things. Just trying to reduce a little bit before I have to pack up and move. <clears throat> but here are the games that I have picked up in the last month or two uh, that I thought you guys would be interested in. I'm sure there's probably a couple more that I'm missing here, but uh, I will not be putting gameplay footage in here today. I know people complain about that sometimes, but uh, I just don't have the time for a produced video today, uh, getting gameplay footage together for, you know, 20 odd games would take me several hours and I just wanted to get a video out to share with you guys a little bit of an update on how the collection is going. So thanks for sticking. If this is not your kind of video, I appreciate your time here checking in with me. Thanks so much for watching. But uh, let's get right into the games here. So I have several Switch games that I have picked up and I'm just going to quickly talk about them a little bit give you a bit of a story. So here I have a copy of Hunt Down. This is an indie run and gun game. Uh, I absolutely love this game. I already own it uh, digitally on Steam and I play it on the Steam Deck all the time. Fantastic game. There's a funny story that actually ties to another game here. Let me see if I can find it. Where did it go? Okay. So another game that I picked up was Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door when this came out. And here in Canada, if you pre-ordered this game, it came with a cardboard slip cover that had the GameCube art on it. Well, I don't really care about this game all that much from a collection standpoint. I don't have any nostalgia for this game or the Paper Mario series. So I reached out on Twitter because these slip covers had been selling for ridiculous amounts of money because very few people were able to get their hands on them uh, out there. They were available at the Nintendo New York store in the States, but that was the only way anyone in the States could get a hand <clears throat> on them. But anyway, I slapped it up on Twitter. I said, hey, if you really care about this slipcover for this game, uh, let's work a trade. You know, I'm not interested in your hundreds of dollars. Just trade me for another Switch game. Uh, so, uh, JKB, another YouTuber uh, and streamer that I know, reached out to me and offered me uh, a Switch game. I chose from a few, and this is the one I chose, Hunt Down, uh, because I absolutely love this game and I really wanted a physical copy of it. So, I basically got this for free, minus the $3 in shipping it cost me to ship him uh, the piece of cardboard, if you will. So, two games for the price of one, really. Couldn't complain. Uh, moving on here, a game that I had and sold, Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Now, I have a weird relationship with Mario. I've come to the realization that I'm not really a Mario fan, and I know that sounds weird coming from somebody who's such a Nintendo fan, but I just prefer other platformers more. I like Crash Bandicoot more. I like Kirby more. Um, you know, I do... This is a great game. Like, let me say, this is a great game. But I didn't really like the way this game felt disconnected, disjointed, if you will. Like, it was a series of mini-levels and smaller challenges and everything sort of felt disjointed on the map. You didn't feel like you had a cohesive progression. It would just be, you know, go through each level and try and get as many of the Wonder Seeds as possible so you can progress. And I don't know. There was some pretty creative platforming in this, but when I first bought this at launch, I just wasn't feeling it. So I ended up trading it in for something else. And then I found this uh, out there on uh, Facebook Marketplace, 
for like $30, which is, you know, less than I got for tra trading it uh, before. So I thought, okay, I'll pick it up again. And I've played it some more now. And I do have to admit that this is really a great platforming game. But Mario is still not my favorite. Uh, something else I picked up super recently here that I was a little disappointed in as well, and that is Castle of Shikigami 2. This is a PS2 shoot-em-up, a fantastic PS2 shoot-em-up. One of my favorites, and I actually have it on my emulation build here. And here's the problem with this. This seems to be a direct port of the PS2 game. There are no enhancements that I could tell, visually or otherwise. It doesn't look any better uh, running on my Switch on my TV than it does look here, emulated and upscaled to like 720p or something. Um, I'm a little disappointed because this was like $55 Canadian um, for just a direct port of a game that you can beat in like an hour. Um... I would not recommend picking this up over the PS2 version unless this is just the only way that you can play this game. This is a fantastic shoot-em-up. One of my top four or five favorites of all time. I was just hoping for some visual upgrades. Uh, I was hoping for a better, you know, interface, maybe some more game modes. Like, you know, I don't know. I was just disappointed at the price. If it was 20 or $30, uh, I would have felt a lot better about it. All right, Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age. This is a game that I put several hours into and really enjoy. Uh, and then I sold it with my entire collection back in the day. So I still have the save file on my Switch. And when I was able to find this at a pawn shop, I think it was a pawn shop for... Um, what was it? 40 bucks. I thought, okay, uh, I guess it's time to pick this up again because I really do want to play this game again. Um, it's been a while. It's been probably two years, so I don't know whether I'm going to remember where I left off or whether I'm going to have to uh, start all over again, which is the curse of the dabbler, right? You, you, you put a couple hours into a game... I actually put probably about 10 hours into this game. But you put a couple hours into this game and a couple hours into that game. And before you know it, you've got 100 games that are theoretically on the go and nothing's getting completed, right? Uh, here's something I picked up off Marketplace for like 10 bucks. Um, Nickelodeon Kart Racers Grand Prix uh, 2. This is the second one. This is the better one. They improved a lot in the second game. And this is a perfectly playable, uh, you know, Mario Kart clone, if you will. Uh, it's it's decent. The racing mechanics are decent. Uh, the character selection is fun. Um, but if you're not real invested in these Nickelodeon characters, uh, I would say you might as well just play Mario Kart. Uh, this is a fun alternative if you just want a different vibe, but I wouldn't run out and grab this, uh, you know, as a fantastic kart racer or anything. It is just fine. All right, here's something interesting I did a trade for with my buddy Cameron, and this is Forgotten Anne. Uh, I've only played a little bit of this. I just got this a couple of weeks ago. I do want to play this right shortly this year. Um, this is an interesting style of game uh, where you're you're moving through 2D environments and solving puzzles and things like that with a really beautiful art style and a really nifty story. Um, the art style reminds me of like Studio Ghibli films or something. It's uh, it's something that I'm pretty excited to check out. This was a limited run game, so the physical copy is kind of rare. Uh, and then something I actually just picked up yesterday, came out a few days ago, but I just picked up my pre-order, and that is Shin Megami Tensei V Vengeance. Now, 
I'm not really sure where to go. I've been dabbling in this in the original game, Shin Megami Tensei V. I've been playing the original game off and on since it came out a couple of you know, a couple of years ago now, 2021 or two, I can't remember. But uh, it's you know something I pick up and I play for a couple of hours and put down for a couple of weeks and. Uh, I really enjoy the vibe in the game, but when I heard that this was coming out, uh, I figured this was the perfect time to jump on the physical copy because I only had it digitally on my Switch. So this game includes the original base game with some enhancements, as well as a complete, complete different story arc as well, like the Vengeance mode or whatever. Uh almost more or less doubling the size of the game because it gives you two story arcs. Uh, I'm not 100% sure where I want to start with this, if I want to start all over at the beginning, or whether I want to finish the base game that I have digitally and then start into the new story here. I'd appreciate your opinions down in the comments below if you uh, have played the original game, and if you know about this game, I would appreciate your perspective as to how I should approach this, because these are big, time-consuming games. I have a lot of hours into the other version, so I don't know if I want to start all over or jump right into the new story, or I don't know. Let me know. All right, another game that I already owned... Uh, my daughter Lily asked if she could borrow this game, and uh, I have a feeling I'm not going to see it for a long time, so I ended up just telling her to keep it, and I bought another copy, and that is Story of Seasons, Pioneers of Olive Town, which is one of my favorite games on the Switch. To be honest, uh, if, I, if you were to ask me what my top five favorite experiences on the Switch have been, this might be on there, uh, this Animal Crossing for sure, um, I'm not going to go into the whole top five right now, but this is such a charming farming game, charming farming, that, that, that rhymes, I'm such a nerd, it's a charming farming game folks, and uh, it has all the right mechanics to just tickle my fancy it has stuff to do all the time. You can go chop down trees and, you know, pull weeds. And there's so many things that you can do to keep yourself busy. The fishing mechanic is really cool. Uh, the townsfolk are really friendly. And there's a lot to do in terms of building relationships and stuff. Uh, I really love this game a lot more than most of the other games in the franchise. To be honest, I find Story of Seasons games dreadfully slow-paced most of the time, and this one has a lot more to do. It's a lot more fast-paced uh, than even like Stardew Valley or something like that. There's just stuff going on all the time in this game, and that's why I love it so much. Glad to have that back in my collection, because... Thanks, Lily, for liking some of the same games that I do. All right, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Cowabunga Collection, another game that I had digitally uh, on the Steam Deck, and I wanted a physical copy before it got rare or whatever. Uh, I love being able to play these old games on a modern system. I can play all of these games on here on my Batocera machine, no problem, but it's kind of cool to have this physical copy and be able to pop it into the Switch. And there's a lot of stuff in here uh, that you don't get with emulation. Like there are museum elements and cool artwork and, you know, things like that that they've done with this to flesh out this package and make it just a lot cooler. So if you haven't picked these up yet and you're a fan of the Ninja Turtles, this was 30 bucks. It's a steal at that price. It's a fantastic package. Uh, and then another game that I picked up, didn't like, sold, and bought again because I wanted to give it another chance, and that is The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. I bought it again. I tried it again. I still hate this game. Uh, will I sell it again? I don't know. I like I, this is the most modern 
Zelda game before Breath of the Wild. And seeing as I think Breath of the Wild is one of the best gaming experiences I've ever had, I want to, you know, go back and try some of the older Zelda games. <coughs> excuse me, that I missed out on because I really never played any of the 3D Zeldas. I played the Nintendo and Super Nintendo games and some of the handheld games, but I've never played any of the older handheld Zeldas, or uh, sorry, console Zeldas. So I wanted to give this a chance, but this is definitely the black sheep of the family. Uh, up on the shelf here, I have Ocarina of Time 3D, and I'm going to try and get into that at some point. That's it for the Switch games. I have a couple of Xbox One games here as well because uh, I do still actively collect for that. And something that I had been looking for a deal on for quite some time now is Elden Ring. This is an Xbox Series slash Xbox One copy. It can be played on either. I'm using the Xbox One S, obviously. And this game looks and performs just fine on the Xbox One. Uh, I don't know what the frame rate is, but it's perfectly playable nonetheless. Um, this game is hard as balls, man. Um, they say this is one of the easier games in the uh, Souls-like genre because it's open world and you can go your own direction and slowly level yourself up to be, you know, over-leveled to take on the boss characters and that sort of thing. I've been playing this a little bit, and I've been doing exactly that, exploring the world, getting killed a few times, and going back and forth, and eventually beating some of the smaller stuff. You find a cave or a cavern or something like that off in the distance, and you go in there, and, you know, there's something crazy around every corner, right? And I really like what they've done with this game. I think it's fantastic. Uh, 25 million other people also think it's fantastic, so I'm not crazy. I've never really been much for these type of games that, uh, you know, pride themselves on being difficult specifically. But I wanted to give it a try, and uh, so far I'm enjoying it. Is it hard? Yeah. Am I dying? Yeah, but I think everybody does. So give it a try out there. If you're scared... Uh, of trying a game like this, I think this is a perfect entry point because, uh, you know, it is accessible. Even though it is hard, you can also avoid a lot of the, you know, harder bosses after you get through the tutorial section. You know, you can, you can see them off in the distance and you can go in a different direction. And there is stuff that you can do to level yourself up and find better equipment and that sort of thing. All right. A series that I have been wanting to try for quite some time, and I just got these day before yesterday, actually. So I played a little bit of the first game uh, for about half an hour or so, and it's still in my Xbox. I plan to continue playing it, and that is Life is Strange and Life is Strange 2. Um, these games, I was talking to my buddy Sean about how to really categorize these games. He calls them adventure games. They are a mix of point and click uh, and adventure, a little bit of, you know, running around in third person sort of thing. Uh, but it's mostly making decisions and listening to cutscenes and narratives and that sort of thing. Uh, but really cool games that I have wanted to try for a long time. Uh, I'll probably pick up Life is Strange 2 True Colors on the Switch once I get through these. But I'm always interested in finding anything on the Xbox that isn't a Call of Duty type game. Um, you know, it's just fun to discover what is in that Xbox library that most people don't think of. Alright, quickly moving on here because we're almost at the 20 minute mark. Uh, I've picked up several PS3 games in the last week or two, a couple from my buddy Liam, a couple from the pawn shop, uh, but just today I picked up Bayonetta. Um, I did at one point have Bayonetta 1 on Switch when it released. Uh, I don't have that anymore, so I thought I would pick up the PS3 version. 
I still have Bayonetta 3 on the Switch back here, so I just need to pick up Bayonetta 2 somewhere. Uh, and then I picked up today as well, Front Mission Evolved. Uh, as far as CGR Undertow is concerned, this is a pretty lackluster game for a Front Mission game. But watching the gameplay footage, this looks pretty fun, to be honest. Uh, <clears throat> Third-person mech shooter looks great. I bought a second copy of this off of my buddy Liam by accident. Um, I looked in my Game Eye app, and uh, I looked under Tron, and I didn't have a copy. Uh, I should have looked under Disney's Tron, apparently, so now I have two copies. Whatever. It's actually a really fun game, so I don't mind having two copies. <clears throat> and then Saints Row 2, $7 game. Uh, I have Saints Row 3 and 4 on the PS3, so I'm just trying to complete the collection. So, uh, you know, for those of you who don't know, Saints Row games are basically, like, funny Grand Theft Auto games, if you will. Like, a parody of a Grand Theft Auto game, basically. Uh, Lego Harry Potter, years 5 to 7. I don't have uh, years 1 to 4 yet. Uh, I need to find that. But uh, I would like to get all the LEGO games on the PS3. They're pretty cheap. It's a pretty easy thing to do. Uh, so, again, LEGO Star Wars 3, The Clone Wars. The Clone Wars are my favorite uh, time period in the Star Wars uh, universe or timeline or whatever. Um, LEGO games, basically, if you like the subject matter, if you like the licensed property, you'll probably like it. If you don't, it's just LEGO. Uh, picked up Dishonored at Value Village for $2.99. Um, I feel like that's a pretty good game, and I actually picked this up because I saw on the cover that this was developed by Arcane, and Arcane was just recently shut down after, I think it was Redfall that they just made, um, or I could be wrong, but anyway, uh, I was curious about uh, a game that was thought better of by them back in the day. I'd never played this. It sounds interesting, so I thought I would give it a try. Let me know down in the comments if you've played Dishonored, because... Uh, I'm probably not going to get to this right away. I have a pretty big backlog of stuff on the Switch right now. But uh, almost down to the bottom here. Dynasty Warriors Gundam. This case is covered in nasty stickers here. But uh, I really like the Dynasty Warriors franchise. I like all the spin-offs like Fire Emblem Warriors and Hyrule Warriors. Uh, I really like that Musu gameplay. And the idea of being able to do that as a Gundam... Uh, just sounds awesome. I just picked this up like three or four days ago. I haven't had the chance to pick it up. And the same guy, my buddy Liam, uh, has the sequel to this as well, which I'm going to be picking up at some point in the next couple of weeks. Um, these games aren't super expensive, but they are in the $25 to $30 range Canadian. Um, but uh, yeah, certainly if you like that Musu uh, style of gameplay and uh, you'd like to do it as a Gundam, these games do exist for you. And then the last game, and arguably probably the biggest one right now, um, in terms of, like, collectability, is Folklore, which I also got off my buddy Liam, who is a dirty reseller, but uh, he gives me good deals, so I let it slide, if you know what I mean. Folklore is one of those semi-obscure PS3 games that has shot up in value. Uh, this will go for an, anywhere from 60 to 70 or $80 uh, Canadian, probably like 50 in the States. But uh, very good RPG. Uh, some very interesting mechanics with the six-axis controller. Um, probably one of the only games that really did that well. I think also Puppeteer did that and it's another game like that that's super popular as well for collectors but anyways guys thanks so much for watching thanks for subscribing if you see anything in here that you like let me know and maybe we can have a conversation about it on x or something thanks so much bye bye